skip this slide. <laughs> um, I wanted to start by telling you that two and a half years ago at 52, I went back to school. I'd worked in film for 25 years as a set designer. Um, and a set designer is someone who does the construction drawings. Not, I don't production design. Um, it's deep in the system of an art department. But I'd done it for 25 years. I did Kill Bill, Dunkirk, Hunger Games. My first movie was JFK. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, basically what happened is that I, I realized I'd lost a creative thread. I'd been executing someone else's ideas for a long time. And although creative and fun, I started to sense that something was really missing for myself. So I started taking drawing classes at the Louvre, and then a friend suggested, why don't you look at school? And I thought, that's insane. But I did it anyway. And so I started looking around, and I found a transdisciplinary new media program. And this meant I would be exploring all the new media that was out there. Because one of the things that had happened to me was that I felt like after being in film for so long, it had changed so much. And I wasn't part of that conversation anymore. I actually draw with a pencil. And I would have young people come to me and say, can I see what you're doing? And I'm like, and they, they couldn't believe that it came out of my head. There was no stylus. So I was that antiquated. So when I went to school, I decided that I would unlearn everything and have my brain completely open. Um, so I'm going to tell you a quick story about a summer holiday in a cave. In 2011, I took a family holiday with three families, seven children, and two weeks. And this is important because we were in the middle of a river and we were in a canoe traffic jam. And I thought, this is gonna be a really long vacation. Um, and then I knew our next stop was a prehistoric cave to go look at drawings. And I thought to myself, this is great for the kids. We're doing this for the children. Eventually we'll get home and eat a meal and chill out. My ideas about what a, a cave painting was, I think were based in the Flintstones or the idea that a man would pull a woman into a cave by her hair. So I walked into this cave and this is what I saw. And I could not believe that it was so intimate and beautiful and wise and sophisticated. And one of the things I wanted to talk about today is that I think that every age speaks to that generation. And this is incredible. It, it actually, you know, it's on a cave wall, but it has movement, especially in firelight, which is something that they don't really, they don't show it in firelight. It's generally bright white lights, but it's extraordinary. And I cried. And then I was like, this I didn't see coming. So something else that happened in the process of being in school is that I got to see a lot of art with a new set of eyes. And I had seen this painting in Italy in 1984, and I was just one of the students walking through the museum, and it really didn't impact me very much. But this was new media at the time, because it's forced, per I mean, it's linear perspective, and it gave the sense of depth, 3D depth on a 2D plane. And it was completely innovative. In 1984, I was like, that's a nice fresco. Let's go get a beer. So switch to I'm in school, and I'm learning about new media. And this is my daughter. And it was early on a Saturday morning, and she came out of her room, and I said, oh my god, the light's beautiful. I've got to take a video of you. And she looked at me like she was going to kill me. So I took this video of her, and it was a, it was a happy accident. 
but it was all sort of my process of rediscovering my art because I really had lost that thread in my life and I knew that I was really missing something. If you're creative and you don't take care of it, you will pay the price. So something I didn't expect was, I, I'm a visual person, I'd worked in film for a long time, but my idea of going back to school was to like let go of my preconceived ideas and learn anew. But I found myself in virtual reality. I fell in love with it. I couldn't believe all the possibilities. And especially that you could use VR for art. So this is a film where I took the frames from that slow motion video and I placed it inside a virtual environment so that you could actually move in and out of her movement and play with time. This was the first time I'd experimented with this. It's rudimentary and this is, so this is somebody who has goggles on and they're walking through the virtual space and I have sequential movements radiating out so you can actually move through her movement. My point is that the cave painting, the linear perspective, virtual reality, they're all valid forms of art. But I feel like virtual reality is our form of art now. It's gonna give us the chance to explore and understand the human condition in our terms. Because I feel like humans now are having to negotiate and understand technology in our lives. The second piece I'm gonna show you is another, um, I love portraiture photography. I don't consider myself a photographer. It's more of a means to an end. But again, it's kind of exploring how we relate to one another. And so I've taken a traditional art form and I've put it in a virtual environment. So this is a seven foot diameter um, cylinder and it has portraits all around it. And you can move with the goggles on, it actually triggers how the portraits will overlap. This is room scale virtual reality as opposed to having um, uh, hand, handles that'll let you move in space. You're actually walking. And, and that physical movement is, a, is an important part for me because I feel like it makes people more tied to the space. But your movement within that space actually triggers how quickly the images cross over one another. And the idea is that how do we perceive others through our own veil of understanding, through our own life experience? So ultimately, you know, it was my curiosity that really pushed me forward. Um, I knew something wasn't okay. I love what I do. I'm lucky I found a great, in French, métier, and you know, it, it's, it's brought great things into my life, but at some point I had to like push beyond that and know that there was something out there. And so for me, I can return to set design or whatever else I choose to do, but I've found that thread of creativity that I needed and it's also pushed me to meet so many people that are doing so many creative things and to appreciate, you know, the cave drawings and linear perspective by Masaccio. So I think hold on to curiosity and push yourself and be open and don't make assumptions that artwork made by cavemen is by the same people that made the Flintstones. Um, and, and I think that makes our lives a lot richer. Thank you. Thank you.